We are going to commence now with Article 4, Zoning Districts. You may proceed. Oh, by the way, for the record, we advise Jason James has had to leave some small, insignificant thing about needing to preserve his marriage, you know. <laughs> I, 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 I said we could have made his wife an ex officio member and given a receipt here, but... but but he, he said that really wasn't quite what she wanted when she talked in terms of being near him. So, so he had to leave, and uh, so if Madam Secretary will remove his sign if we haven't already. And if we don't see him again, then... Yes, then we know that... <laughs> so, yeah, so, in the interest of familial harmony here, we, we had to allow him to leave after the first three sessions. And no, you don't need to quote me in the minutes, all right? <laughs> so, all right, let's see here. We're beginning Article 4, Zoning Districts, the Establishment of Zoning Districts. Staff report, please. Thank you, sir. And the particulars here as a summary of changes is that one of the things that really needed to occur in this particular document was a consolidated, generalized table of permitted uses, something that was... Um, easy to see before it was broken up, and as I mentioned earlier in my introduction, they were limited set of uses. We expanded that, identified them uh, by category, and consolidated them into logical groupings as well. Um, we think that's going to make it much easier to find, you know, whether it's a permitted, a special exception. Uh, whether it requires a site plan approval, uh, whether you can do it administratively or not. Uh, additionally, as you all know, uh, and we've talked about before, is the um, uh, new uses that were added to that permitted use, such as the um, marijuana dispensaries and uh, distilleries, which seems to be a very exciting uh, microbreweries uh, and, and brew pubs. Uh, we had the two new overlays, as Nick introduced earlier, the plan corridor uh, de uh, development overlay and the plan community urban design overlay district. And again, that is essentially just applied to Solomia. We created, based upon the comp plan, it required a new zone called the Bayshore Zone. And w one of the more interesting things that we did to make a little more clarity in PD is we divided it and broke it up into PD1, PD2, PD3, and these align with the mixed use uh, that's in your current comp plan. So they, they talk about that as being um, medium density, low, high, and you know, medium. So we've assigned those categories and changed the uh, map accordingly. I'm sorry, mixed use high, not medium density, I apologize. Um, the other thing is that we went through and looked at how your height and density bonuses, you had tables in there that were extremely convoluted. Staff would scratch their head trying to figure out how to make it work. <coughs> Developers would come in and say, ah, how does this work? And when staff couldn't explain it thoroughly because it was very convoluted, very difficult, very challenging, we simplified those, uh, made them much easier. Um, and the other thing that we did was we looked at how to encourage economic development through uh, the site plan approval process and making it a little easier to get through some of the site plan approval through special exceptions depending upon the zoning district. All right. At this time, we'll open the floor to public comment on Article 4. I suspect we're going to get a little more public comment on this than we did in the prior ones. So people wishing to speak may step forward. Why, John? First of all, I want to thank you for not closing the public hearing on this item when I was out of the room. Oh, I, did I, I missed that. I'm sorry, John. <laughs> I, was, I, I thought you might do that. John I'm getting Flora. older, John, you know. That's okay. Um, I wanted to speak about uh, section 4203, page 7. It starts on page 6, but on page 7, uh, you'll see under the first asterisk um, the minimum uh, floor area. And I think that 
it was a very astute move to reduce the floor area minimum from 750 to 550 because you just can't what's the matter mr each oh i'm sorry oh i'm sorry i'm sorry <coughs> I, I, okay, I thought you were going to pull that gun on me, <laughs> and I was really. Um, anyway, it was a very astute move to, to reduce that because, if anything, this city needs development. And when you have 750 square feet as the minimum, this was just not happening. Um, I think you recognize I represent a few developers in town. They couldn't do this. Now, when I say 550, that, as you can see, is for multifamily, residential, and mixed use. Okay. Now, the remarks of Ms. Love, the Chair, and Mr. Held have made part of my argument for me. When, the, when Ms. Love first spoke about what the public wants, one of the first things she mentioned was workforce housing. And a subsection, a <coughs> subcategory of workforce housing is senior workforce housing. I think you will recognize that in this city and in this county, um, it is a, an enormous burden where people have to spend 50% of their salary just to be housed. And we in this community are among the worst for that in the United States where the percentage of our salary is going to housing. Specifically regarding senior workforce housing, what I want to propose is for studio <coughs> units, there be a uh, minimum of 500 square feet. And to um, kind of reduce that, not not the square footage, but to to um, make that argument a little smaller, I would suggest that you do this only in your special purpose districts, because that's what those districts are for. What districts are the special purpose special districts, purpose. like NRO and the central districts, et cetera, the P P PUD, right? Exactly. You want to spur development. That's where you want to do it. You don't necessarily want to do this citywide, but that's, that's what I would say. And the point that Mr. Seyfried made regarding architects, when we deal with Section 5, um, Marcus Frankel, who is a renowned architect, um, is going to be speaking about how that relates to parking issues. Um, and again, if you if you want to see, and it's up to you, we'll just do it briefly, we're not talking about any specific project, but a project that Mr. Frankel is working on, you're going to see a rendering that's going to make you very happy, Mr. Seyfried, and you're going to see that there are some architects who have some imagination and want to build really beautiful projects in the city. So, um, again, I would ask the board to consider, is my time up? <laughs> Okay, I would ask the here. board to consider making studios, only studios, 500 square feet minimum, and only in the special purpose districts. Any questions, or I'll go sit down. Yeah, you, you, you've made your point. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Anyone else wishing to speak to Article 4? Last call for anyone speaking to Article 4, hearing none. Public hearing is suspended, pending any new items that may come up during the course <coughs> of our discussion. Just as a quick comment before yes. we... Yes. I think that, and in my discussion with staff, that the language that was just discussed was the intent of the, of the change, that the 550 was designed to be within the NRO, and it was for studio apartments, and the way it reads, it's 550 for any place, anything citywide. No, uh, at that briefing, we did discuss that. And then that's one of the things that we <coughs> to change that to reflect that, you know, instead of having citywide, maybe 
we can modify that language to make it like within the NRO and also having a cap on it, maybe a 50 or 20 percent, whatever that is, so we don't have a proliferation of those units only. And, and but right now it says you know multifamily and mixed use. So that's the language that, that was, has been proposed into our discussion, and that's what we kind of you know also discuss. All right. <laughs> That is, do we cut off 50 square feet on studio apartments <coughs> and clarify that they're going to be only in special districts? That's really, exactly. we're, we're haggling at the moment based on Mr. Del Gloria's pitch uh, about 50 square feet. Yes. Okay. All right. Just so we, we know where that's going. All right. Um, let's start to my left this time. Ms. Belay, do you have any issues relative to Article 4? I do. Um, do you want them to live in a matchbox? Because that's pretty much what is lending <coughs> itself to. Um, it's bad enough that it's 550 square feet. Now you're knocking off 50 more feet. And then we want to, or well, whatever was pitched, uh, for it to be restricted to just one area so now the people who are living in that area get to live in the matchboxes I, I don't agree with that that may be an extreme analysis but we'll consider that 500 feet is is a very tight space it's, it's, it's a very tight space I mean <coughs> what, what are we, what kind of positions are we putting our city residents in mm -hmm. yes it may be nice it, it, it it may be a very nice um, um, development, but I mean, let's think about the space. It's 500 feet. 500 it's square not feet. 500, I'm sorry, 500 square feet. It's, it's just not enough room for a person to um, move about in or just, or to dwell in. <laughs> so. That's a consideration. Do we have any other points to bring up? Ms. Belay. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just that, I'm, and I'm looking at the difference where it jumps from 750 square feet and then that's back to 550 square feet. I don't know, it's just, I just think it's just too much space we're cutting down from, so that's just my opinion. Okay, <coughs> all right, uh, Mr. Pishon. Yeah, and, and first I guess there's a couple of things we needed to try to clean up with heights, uh, particularly along Biscayne Boulevard where on page Eight, nine, nine. Well, you can let him move around. We'll get. I'm sorry. But go ahead. Talk. Talk about your, your heights. What page do you want to talk about? Well, the, the page nine sections one and two. That's just different setbacks, and those are, are those correct as stated? Yes, they are currently in the code. We're Any, not changing them. Anything with green that's in green double underline has is existing text Language. that has been relocated from somewhere else with maybe some additions that you'll see which would appear in black but highlighted in yellow. Uh, unfortunately. It's yeah, it's all in black and white. No, uh, green. Uh, so green. Okay. But you'll see it's double underlined. So that means it got moved. It, it got, got moved. moved. It correct. got moved, okay. Just, it'll appear but elsewhere. Correct. So that that has the height of, of east side of Biscayne Boulevard at 45, 45 feet. 45, yeah, instead of 55. Instead of 55. Yeah, which is, yeah. And on, mm -hmm. which is correct. Yes. So this language has just been relocated. So it 55 or 45 is, no, 55 is the maximum height allowed in that zoning district. However, on the east side of this skin from 123rd to 131st, it's 45. There's okay. a reduction of that. We talked about that, exactly. Yeah. So then on page 39, yes. What page? 39. 39, uh, section three at the bottom, That says 55, again. I mean, yes, there's a discrepancy, but uh, I, I think this needs to be addressed. I think this is from the complaint language. It is from the complaint, it's exactly from, from the complaint. Exactly, this is from the complaint language, and I think, you know, but 
it, whenever you know we have that uh, sort of you know discrepancy, I think you know the most you know strain, uh, stringent regulations you know do apply. So and I think in this case it's, it still would be the 45. We can clean that up and then uh, refer that back to that other section, but the 45 would say it applies. Okay, so as long as we just clean that up, yeah. please. I think you just added just add language to kind of near because of that restriction on that yeah. question. Let, 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 me, let me see if I got this correct because I, 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 I had this on the line too. On the east side of Biscayne Boulevard from 123rd to 135th or just south um, of the bridge. Yes. Okay, that's going to be 45 feet yes. on the east side. On the west side, how high can we go? I think it's a. I think it's 110. It says 110. 110 because it's the PCD. Correct. PCD. On the 110 with PCD, 55 feet otherwise? Um, actually, the 55 feet comes from the comprehensive plan. That's in the comp plan. Yes. Correct. So we can go 55 feet. On the west side of the boulevard, one, 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 two, three to one, three, five. No, I mean, there, there's no restriction along the west side in general. I mean, on the west side. Yeah. On the west side, we can go 55 feet. Yes. On the east side, it's only. No, 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 not 55. No. Because of the PCD. I mean, the I underlying mean, land use. We can go 100. Wait a minute. You got, wait, 110, 55. I feel like I'm in an auction here. <laughs> 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 Go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, uh, the underlying land use is a commercial office, and which allows for 55. However, with the PCD, you got an additional, you know, uh, a explain for the purpose of the record since we're televised. What is a PCD? The PCD is a plan corridor uh, the, a over the district, which was plan created. Plan corridor development. Okay. The, yeah, with, uh, through the complaint amendment. So now you g we got a, a, an over the district over that. A commercial office that gotcha. allows for a greater height, which is 110 okay. feet. So Only on one side of the road. Yeah. On the west side of the street. I, know, I got you. Okay. I want to. Okay. Because I, I, I like you. I'm going through this A to B, back and forth. And yeah. I'm saying, wait, but now we're limited at 55. Right, but so now you we can go got up to 110. Okay. I got you. Okay. Right. Fine. Yeah. All right. Okay. For planned corridor development. All right. And, I'll, and we talked about the. Uh, uh, what do I want to call this? Oh, usage. The usages of the, with the, the allowable, u what's the word I'm looking for? Permit permissible permissible, permissible, permissible usage usages within each of the, permissible each of the districts. Uh, and when we talked about it, it, it's the only place in the city that parts, new parts can be sold are on the east side of Biscayne Boulevard, yeah. uh, which is question. Uh, Which you were going to, I think, change to a C1 I and mean, one. Yeah. So we we discussed that. Uh, so yeah, that's one thing we have to consider because. Yeah. Uh, same thing with coin laundries. Oh, you're at the per you're looking at the, the permitted, permitted use, use table. table. Yeah. Okay. Same thing with coin laundries on back of the second page. In, on the services. We were talking about where those should be allowed. Yeah. Bob, what page are you on? Again? I'm sorry. Yeah. What page? I'm on the pull-out sheet, the chart. Pull out. and I started on the front and went to the back. We made you a big, giant one. The one that's in the actual document is quite is much smaller. We made that so you could read it. Yeah. You're in the last section on that chart, right? I'm sorry. So it's no. the last section. The back side of page one, or are you on the page back three? Side back well, side of page one. I was one. on back. I jumped to the back side of page one, but I. And a thing that we I, I would like to agree to readdress is the last element on the on the whole sheet is showroom retail sales, and this was the infamous Volvo amendment that allows for vehicle sales. What allows for vehicle sales? Let's just go with that. And what I what I'm what I'm wrestling with is you go to the previous page and all forms of vehicle sales and service aren't allowed in the area. So if we're going to, if we're, if this is going to be vehicles, then we should include that in some form of a vehicle sales or service cool. description and not lump it in with whatever somebody believes showroom retail sales actually means. 
So if we want to qualify that in some form of a car sale that, does, that, that allows for new vehicles or no service. Well, that's, that's kind of category. You've got vehicle showroom already set up over here. And then you have this separate one that is a furniture. It's furniture. It's for larger things like furniture and things that are non-vehicular. I understand, and that's but that's the the question is this: if you're going to be selling vehicles, right? And and that's the place you're going to sell vehicles. There's four there, there's four lo four spots for vehicle sales. We've, we've articulated that in different fashions, new, used, major, major and minor services, sales and displays. And we've got a lot of conversation about vehicle sales. Mm -hmm. And so if that designation is going to allow for some form of vehicle sales, I'm suggesting that the portion of that that does address vehicle sales be lumped in with vehicle sales and someplace. Um, uh, let me cl maybe uh, clarify that for Debbie. Because uh, we had a text amendment, you know, uh, I think uh, less than two years ago to allow, you know, indoor vehicle sales showroom into the C2B, a C2BW district. And then uh, <coughs> it kind of fall on the showroom. And I think, you know, what the commission is trying to say, you know, we need to um, put that under the vehicle related uses there so at least people know what it is. When they say showroom, they just say it's just, it's well, allowed anywhere. Can we just amend this to say non-vehicular? Yeah, this one can say non-vehicular, and then we have to add another line that says, that you know, do, yes. I'm sorry, Gary. To, where it says showroom retail sale, do a parenthetical that says non-vehicular. Non -vehicular. That's fine. Yeah, and then the other one is addressed on the vehicle uh, related uses. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. That's perfectly fine. I mean, that's, that's I just think it's, uh, otherwise, you would, we're, if it, yeah, if it walks like a duck and it quacks, it's a duck. Right, so, so, we have a, so we have an agreement on the amendment to that. Okay. And I guess, I guess that's exactly I'll, what it I'll skip past that piece. The other piece in here that I, and it's a similar it's discussion I had a moment ago. Uh, let me get to the right page. Page 25. Uh, it's section T, which used to be called waiver, and now it's called modification or alteration. And the development standards hereof may be modified or altered formally by the city council. And now we're changing that to the development standards may be modified or altered by the city manager. And I think that's a big step. Well, I have the same question. <laughs> For the record, I had the same conversation with the city manager, staff had an answer saying that it was a redundant statement. Can you clarify, can you reiterate or explain that further as to why it was looked upon as a redundancy? It, it <laughs> currently, you know, I mean, uh, a for a, a PD section, when we, we do have that, this is, okay, let me clarify, make sure. So we're dealing with the right section. Yeah, O, P, D, A, it's only the PD. And the PD requires a, a certificate, um, a conditional use approval, or CUP, mm -hmm. and which you know sets you know the standards you know for development, the density, the height. I mean, at times you know, I if you want to, to make there's currently a process in the code. I mean, there was a text amendment done like three years ago that allowed for minor modification to a previously approved certi a conditional use permit. Mm -hmm. And then I think this basically that's what that refers to when you trying to, and then also to the other application that uh, Ms. Debbie mentioned earlier, the substantial compliance. It's already an approved development order, but they want to make some minor modification to that, but that doesn't require a full city council approval. <coughs> if it's a major, then it go back to city council. But that's what you know, this try to address here. And if I yeah. recall our conversation, which maybe you should put minor. You were going to change the language. Yeah, we need to clarify to that. that. Yeah, exactly. All right. I mean, that's fine. I, I agree with yeah. what you just said, but that's but not what it says. That's no, no, exactly. We agree to clarify the language, maybe add minor to that, so at least we're not uh, misleading and nobody okay. felt that they're being misled right. by this <coughs> So we're, language. we're in agreement on that, then that that language will be changed. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Now, Ms. Boulay. I just had two quick questions. 
um, under B, Development Standards. What page? What page? Uh, page 21. <coughs> B, one, two, three, four. The fifth point, where it says hospitals and or, and then related is stricken medical facilities. I'm just wondering why is related um, stricken? I mean, uh, this based uh, on discussion we had um, with the uh, developers, I mean, if it's, it does have to be related to the hospital. What it, the way it's written, right, it has to be related to the hospital. That can be your standalone use, you know. It basically, that's what that we're trying to establish here. Okay. So any type of medical facility yeah. would be permitted, not simply a medical Affiliated building to a hospital. hospital. Okay. Exactly. Okay, I got you. All right. And then the second point of clarification, Page 23, under exception, letter F. Uh, since it's being stricken, does that mean um, there's no minimum percentage that has to be used? Well, on the F? Yeah, the area, okay, so the minimum, minimum of 75, 75 percent of the ground floor, so that area there, does that mean that that area that's that's um the seventy five percent that has to be used is does that mean that now it's doesn't I'm, I'm matter how many how much of it is being used or and, and, and I think you know I think this was like a, a requirement that it was really unnecessary because basically as part of uh it's based on on the market really I mean it to put that cap there I think you know some developers think you know this was too restrictive okay and and then but but yet we still have to look at it you know when it comes because to the city, it would come to this board as a part of a conditional use permit to establish the uses and then you know the percentage of uses that on certain floor. But uh, they 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 think this was a little too restrictive. So it was to help if they wanted to use more. Yeah, exactly. Versus less. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. All right. So it's it's a market driven issue. It's a market driven issue. Gotcha. Exactly. All right. Uh, are those the only questions you have? Yes. All thank right. You. Uh, Mr. Ernst. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted to comment on the uh, 550 feet uh, um, language that was uh, added into uh, what we were talking about with allowable square footage. Uh, I'm well aware of the change in the market that has taken place in this town with regards to uh, what people are buying now and the kind of customers that we see that are looking for places to live in. And those are millennials. Those millennials don't like to drive anymore. They ride bikes, they ride scooters, they look for smaller places to live. Uh, they live in lofts, they live in studio apartments. Um, I was a big uh, proponent of uh, holding the 750 square um, feet limit and uh, recognizing through articles that I've read over the years with um, following the trends with uh, what's being built in other cities, especially in the urban centers. Um, uh, they want something small. They want, uh, they're, they're, not, they're not hoarders, they're not cluttered. They live by themselves. And I think it's at this current pace, it's, it's market driven that we, we allow the 550. 500, I don't quite understand how we came up with it. Uh, maybe John could elaborate the difference between 550 or 500, what a developer saw with wanting to go at a 500 uh, square foot level versus the 550 square foot level. I, When I was single in the 70s, I lived in an apartment building called Pioneer Apartments down on 6th Avenue, 122nd uh, Street. And that was a one bedroom um, apartment with a living room, a bathroom, and a kitchen. That was less than 550 feet, and it was quite comfortable for a single guy. And so I don't know along the lines that we got into the mindset that I can understand that the 750 feet was because builders were building that. And it sort of 
became the the norm that the apartments were bigger. I always wanted a bigger apartment, but they they were two bedroom apartments, and people would get a roommate for that. Well, right now the market's not dictating that size space. It's dictating smaller space because that's what younger people are looking for, working people are looking for. Lofts, lofts are big enough height to ceiling where you could put 550 square feet of of uh, walls and still have enough height to where you could put another level within 550 feet. That's the way a loft works. And that's the way New York City uh, 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 adjusted to it. So uh, I had a big change in attitude seeing how 550 feet could be used and, and be marketable. And the more you hear uh, from, from developers that want to build workforce housing, or what we call workforce housing, or available housing for people that are uh, on their own and working, uh, they want smaller. And I think it's something that we have to consider, and I would have no no qualms, as uh, Mr. Delagoria stated, we're, we're going to allow it or, or suggested that we allow it in that um, 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 particular zone. Did, was it SE or the uh, SP? District, I forgot what, what have you said. But again, with mixed use, which we get into later on, where we want to have people build businesses or, or start businesses on the first floor, and we're, we're kind of encouraging that, I seriously doubt that that would allow us to also have 750 feet. It may, in fact, require us to have a lower size square footage to accommodate that mixed use of commercial on the bottom living on the top. So looking at, having that in mind, looking at that, um, again, I, I, I would, would definitely um, favor allowing for the less square footage. And it's just only because times have changed and I think we need to adapt to that. If in fact we have developers that say, "Yeah, I can give you a, a high quality product that I can sell at, at a reasonable price for people to live in that work, and not have them worry about having to pay," I, I guarantee you they would have to pay a lot more for that square footage in downtown Miami than what they would have to pay for if we we had that here in downtown North Miami or or in the designated area that we had talked about. And I probably would add to that because currently our code doesn't have any provision for elderly uh, a unit. And then we know the elders, they don't need that much space. And then, you know, it can become a, an income issue for them also to be able to afford those space. And in other code, other a city code, in for elderly housing, the requirements are less. Right. And right now it's at 750 for any multifamily. Right. And that also affects that, you know, and the elderly. And studio, I mean, uh, student housing also, which is, if we had a, if the downtown master plan, you know, there's a need for that in the city. There's a demand for it in the city, but yet it's still not addressed. And then with the 750 applying across the board for any multifamily, that also yeah. affects that in the provision well, two of Two bedrooms, those. too. Two yeah. bedrooms. And, and then when sure. it comes about, you know, the number of bedrooms, that now we got, you know, minimum housing standards that are addressing you know, overcrowding. So there, there are, you know, specific regulation in place, you know, to the minimum housing standards, you know, for the, for that so i think you know i mean we i mean those numbers can work but you know we really have to look at them and then if anything we can maybe put a cap on the number of such units that can be put in a project right. so we don't have a proliferation of those yeah. units alone maybe l a larger families can also have you know affordable housing right. in the city not but, like you know, cramping a tiny little place uh, i mean when you get into mixed use yes uh, in particular um, uh, downtown Fort Lauderdale is going through that right now. If you drive along US 1, you'll see the new developments along there. They incorporate the studio apartments. So in order to do that, if we want to, in some respect, we've got to have something that allows for that square footage to be reduced from the 750. So I can, you know, and, and if, you know, I want us to take out the, the broad usage of it as, you know, to alleviate your fears or, or 
or any other fears that it would lead to a proliferation of smaller units. I mean, we're still going to provide the two bedroom apartments for multiple multi families, but we still got to be able to account for for the cost of a single person living in there or or an elderly person to be able to afford a quality quality apartment but does that for mean, a smaller size. Does, but does that mean having affordable housing means means that you have to downsize to, to something that eventually will become inhabitable? Well, no, only because, in fact, again, infrastructure, but just in the sense where you will quickly outgrow 500 square feet. And I am a, millen a, millen a millennial, um, and I know many millennials who do not want a 500 square foot apartment or a 550 square foot apartment. In terms of a loft, I can see how it would work. You, you have that, the space, like you said, where you can condense some things, you can make it work with the loft. But a regular, a regular apartment, it, it, you will eventually outgrow it, and you will outgrow it within sure. the first year. No, I agree. And, and same way with a house, a starter house may be too small for some people. But then but you have what a what what I'm, what I'm, what have I'm suggesting. You have people constantly coming in, in and out, in and out, because they're they're going to be consistently outgrowing it. You at least want residents that are going to be there for a year, two years, or whatever to kind of sure. establish it. Um, well, some sense of stability in the, in the property. <coughs> the, Mr. the mobility Chair. issue is something that you can't really predict. Let, let me yeah. hear with, from the other commissioners, and I'll, I'll turn <coughs> to the Mr. Chair, um, I think this is very critical for you all to understand why this is in there. The community, in every forum that we talk to, um, they were concerned that there's not enough uh, smaller units throughout the city that are affordable. The market is going to determine the mix of uses. You could say, well, you want to have 20% be studios, no more than 20% of a development be studios. But when a, when a developer does a performa, they take that into consideration. So if you start putting, even going to that extent of establishing a ratio, you're going to skew the performa. It's all market driven. It's all market driven. And as Mr. Ernst noted, there is what that is what's happening now in the market is the smaller units. They're I generally the data because I, I do not I, in, in my heart of hearts, I do not believe that it Mark it Lincoln. is related to the city of North Miami. Maybe we're talking about um, downtown Miami. Maybe we're talking about a few other cities. But the city of North Miami, I need to see that data. Uh, Ms. Bull, yeah. this came from the community themselves okay, telling I, us that during the community I, forums yeah. that they I, I, agreed, that they agreed well. and they desired to, to have um, a smaller units available throughout the city. And how many meetings did you have? We had three community forums. How many people attended? We had five meetings. Didn't we? Four. Four meetings. we had. I'm sorry. We had four. four. And how many yeah, people attended? Four I, c I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, Miss Bull. Yeah, I, uh, but all I'm all I'm trying to share with you, Miss Bull. I'm not trying to be argumentative with you at all. Mm -hmm. Is what we heard, mm -hmm. which is now reflected in the LDRs, mm -hmm. that the community has uh, had had very had a lot of really great discussion at the different tables about affordable housing. This was a main topic. It was our number one topic, if you saw on my list. It was the number one topic that was raised throughout the city was the need for more affordable workforce housing. Mm -hmm. And as the developers will tell you, in order to do quality development and get these workforce housing where it can be affordable, you have to allow them to do a mixture of small-large. You had too large of a size at 750. There are homes that are 750 square feet as a home. That's not affordable necessarily, and it's not going to remain affordable. So these developers are trying to tell you, this is what we can produce here that would be affordable. One of the ideas was just sort of like let us figure it out, and we'll tell you what our performa says would be workable. We thought that was a little too loosey-goosey 
that we said, okay, so you could end up with a 250 square foot. Well, that's, that's a micro unit. But have any of you watched the, the tiny homes? Yeah, I've seen them. Have you seen that? 300 square feet. 300 square feet. I just went through this in DeSoto County, in an agricultural county, where they, you cannot find an affordable housing unit. Um, and they've gone to smaller units. They yeah, allow the market to figure out what somebody will, will buy. But we are now, in the, Miami, we are not DeSoto County. I'm trying to explain to you, Ms. Bull, that it's not just here. It is everywhere that this is the same thing that's happening everywhere. Now, as far as the 550 versus 500 square feet, that's the developers trying to tell you that this is what they could produce. Now, whether you would like to establish a ratio and say, Isn't look. Isn't 550 quite a drop from the 750 is. right it's now? It's about 200 square feet, yeah. Exactly. Well, but it's 30 it's percent, a, or exactly. 35 percent. Exactly. So, but what the developer is telling you is that they can. This is what their demand is. They're not going to produce anything that there's not a market for. So we go with another developer. No. We we just can't jip our residents like that. We're going from 750 square feet to 550 square feet. That is just too big of a jump. I'm sorry. I I mean, my other counterparts here they can agree with it, but I don't. Well, and all I'm sharing with you is that this is what your community has asked for. Out the rationale for why this or that. Yeah, I, and I don't right. see the rationale, I don't see the logic behind it. That's too uh, totally, big of a jump. I totally hear you. Um, then, then one of the things that you can do is you can say, here's an idea that you all might want to consider, is do you all want to perhaps say no more than 20% of the units could be 550 square feet? Do you want to say only those units? Now, the community did not say that this should only be in one area of the city or not. They said it, 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 could be, it should be citywide, that you should have this <coughs> citywide. So now. Why should it be citywide? This is what we heard. But from well, who? How, how from how the people. What, what city residents? Are I, I don't know. No, I'm, Three it, meetings. I, I, to me, that just doesn't. Can I make up the, the, the city. Yeah. Can I make a comment here on just that one point? As Debbie knows, I was at almost every one of those meetings. And there was comments about affordable housing. The size really never came up that much. It was about the need for affordable housing. We, it, and I at least the last two I said didn't really get into 550 versus 750. Right. They didn't we didn't have about. that discussion. What we had was about affordable workforce housing. And, um, you know, and I, I just had to jump in on that comment. Um, a lot of this is developer driven because it saves exactly. them money to buy, to build smaller units. It becomes exactly. more economical for the developers who have sort of captured the conversation, um, you know, of, of this whole issue. But anyway, I didn't, um, I, I was just going to jump in, but I didn't want to interrupt. You. I uh, thank you for that because that furthers my point that. It, or it further supports my point that it, this 550 square feet are, to me is like you said sounds more developer driven than community driven um, I really don't think that this is a true account of the millennials or the, the North Miami community at large okay. I, I can see us working around it I can see us putting a percentage on it um, maybe like you said adding lofts to it I can see us working around it, but just flat out saying, hey, this is the number, I, I don't agree with that. Sorry. All right. Well, uh, let's move on now. We understand that. Mike, do you have anything to add to <coughs> this? Yeah, I have. First off, can, before I go with that, can we go back to F on page 23, please? Where you want to go. And I talked briefly with staff about it, and I, I want to make sure I'm clear on this. On mixed uses... It says a complementary combination of office, hotel, multifamily, and retail, and any three combination of permitted uses. So if I want to do a mixed-use project, I have to have three of either office, hotel, residential, or retail. Now... And that's apparently in your comprehensive plan now, so that's a minimum standard. Is that correct? Now, if, if we're 
So any developer who comes in and wants to do a mixed-use project is going to have to have three components. Yeah. That's in a PD. <coughs> That's what in a PD crazy. district. <laughs> it's uh, one of which has to be residential. That's only in a PD district. Yeah, yeah but still. Well, well, I mean, it's just what's the strong yeah. argument to do? Yes, but unfortunately, we put that in the comp plan, and we're stuck with it. Well, we can do. Well, you can do text amendments, right? Yes, that not can as part of this process, but you can. Yeah, yes. can later yeah. on. Well, so anyway, that, that was just. That's how we we're going to resolve these conflicts okay. as we get out. All right, a, a, a few things on the on the on the the size. Um, First off, uh, I was recently at a conference down Brickell Avenue uh, where the Beacon Council was there, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, one of the great comments about the people who were buying in that area of Brickell, okay, one of their comments was units are too small, mm -hmm. okay? They need, th now they're looking, they've been there a while, now they're looking for bigger and they can't find bigger. Mm -hmm. So the argument is both, you know, you know, do they need smaller? Yeah. Do they use bigger? Yes. Um, first off, I don't think North Miami is a target for millennials. Thank you. Okay. I don't think that's happening. If you look at the dynamics, now maybe that will change if we build something, you know, build a better mass draft and they will come kind of thing. Um, but currently what's happening and what has happened for decades in this city is overcrowding. You build, I mean, it, it's everybody in the city knows it. Okay. People with 750 units, 750 square foot units, um, you know, have 10 people living in the house, okay? And we know that. My God, what's going to happen if you have a 550 square unit? That all said, I do support the 550 square foot units, but I think if you, if you, re if you put it um, with senior housing, which is a big need in this community, in North Miami, which I know we talked about all the things that need to happen. We really need to have a, a concentric plan on what we're going to do as far as senior housing goes. But I think for senior housing specifically, or student housing, those would be two categories that the 550 could work. I think if we adopted a percentage, um, even the smaller units that John suggested, if we had a percentage of a project, like 15% or 20% of a project, okay? Um, I think that that would work really well. But to carte blanche, erase 750, uh, no. I think we have to really tailor it to the need versus the reality of what you have here in, in the city. I think senior housing is important, you know, mm -hmm. and not to mean to jump over to something else about parking, but, you know, why does a senior project need two parking spaces? One for the wheelchair. Yeah, I mean, does that make any sense? Uh, we talked about that the other day. Um, but anyway, um, I think that, I think for the launch of 750, I would say no. But I would think for senior-related projects, student-related projects, student housing, or percentages of a uh, larger project would be, I think, a comfortable answer, at least for me. Bob, you cleared up 123rd Street, but I want to talk about uh, the height on 123rd Street between the boulevard and 19th Avenue. It was a pass that I forgot where the hell I went when I just came in. The North Bay Shore Drive. Huh? The North Bay Shore Drive. The North Bay Shore. That's only 35 feet? Yes, sir. And that's, a, that's in the comp plan? I mean, that's our restriction that ex currently existing in the LDR. Well, I'm, I'm looking at the map, and, and, and I see 19th Avenue. You got uh, 18th, 19th, and then you have San Suchi Boulevard. And, and what I don't understand is that little sliver. We're talking about a 25-foot setback. What the heck are you going to build there? At 35 feet with a 25-foot setback, what can you do? You're going back I, 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 I'm familiar with that area. I mean, I walk there. It, it's just it's an impossibility. We're, we're, we're tying some. We're, try, we're tying up some developer's hands. You, you're not going to be able to build over there. And it, 
I don't care. You know, if you go from San Susi East, it, you want to keep nine. that at 35 feet, nine. fine. Page but nine. That doesn't make any sense to me. We're on page nine. Is that the page you're on? Let me see here. I, I, no, I, I had it here. And yeah. Uh, Northeast 123rd Street, South Side, from 19th Avenue to Bay Shore. Maximum height, 35 feet. And I'm looking at 19th Avenue. And, and don't, don't. at the San Susi Boulevard. Yeah, those I, are I, I would just change that and, and make it San Susi Boulevard to, to North Bay Shore. What's the height bet uh, between the boulevard and, and 19th Avenue now? Uh, it's 55, outside of the PCV. 55? 55 feet. Yes. I, I mean, I, I would change that to 55. Um, All right, that's just one. And then let me... Again, we mentioned before something I find that's in the comp plan. Maybe we got to change it. Three or more uh, for mixed use, you need three or more uses. We, we talked about that in the, uh, at our meeting. That's preposterous. I go down to the gables. I see an office building with commercial underneath. You know, now we we often interject residential or Northwest Seventh Avenue off of I ninety five. What do we? What's the height we can go on? Uh, two hundred. Two hundred feet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd like to discuss that. And, and, and that. Here, here's an ideal place, and I don't know why it was, why we can't go residential and mixed use off of I-95. To me, I, I go down to the VA, and I see beautiful apartment buildings off of I-95. And we're thinking in the near term, we're not thinking in the long term. You go to any major city, Chicago, New York, wherever you want to go, off of the expressway are apartment buildings, and they're beautiful. And what are we doing? We're shooting ourselves in the foot. No, no, we don't want any residential here. Why? We want. We do have the We have the McKinley Motel and that other hotel <laughs> over there that was rented out by the hour for five. So is it twenty bucks an hour, Kevin? It still is. So. <laughs> I mean, to me, that that's we, we should. And, and but that's that's in the comp plan also. So we can't change that. We can do an amendment. Yeah, a small. But, but later. Later. Okay. All right. That's just uh, one of. All right. A couple other things I I, I wrote down and um, what I wanted to bring up to you tonight was. Storage areas. Is that in this section here? Self storage? So, yeah, under the permitted use table. What page were we on with them? If you go to the back page, uh, assume. Permitted uses? I was looking yeah. for it. I didn't see it in the. In the yes, uh, the second to the last on the back page of the permitted use table. Self storage facility. It's bolded. Okay. At the bottom. Okay, self storage facilities were permitted in C1. C1. C1 and C2. Okay. What, what, I, what I see happening with self storage, we're getting all over the city. A few, how we ended up at LA Fitness a few years back. I think I was up in Chicago then. But s the people in Keystone Point objected to a self-storage building going up over there. So boom, it was taken out, and then we ended up at LA Fitness. Now, I see them on 123rd Street. I see them on our main streets. You know, we have enough self-storage. They're becoming like pawn shops. You know, we, or, or, or we don't need it there. It, it, it's a bad deal to have. I want to come into the city. I come in from Bay Harbor Island. I want to look at some nice things, not a self-storage place uh, on 123rd Street or 125th Street. We can put them in the industrial area. We have a self-storage place right now on 123rd, uh, or actually, uh, it's now it becomes 125th as you cross the railroad tracks. How many more self-storage places are we going to need? I think that's absolutely preposterous. Well, with all the are we going to be known as the city of self-storage? I mean, I, I have, I, I got to say, I have two on the other side of my lake, which are absolutely gorgeous. They're on Arch Creek Road, and the other one's on Northeast 16th Avenue. They're, they're well, well landscaped. We have another one going off of I-95. 
very nice building. But on the main street, where we want to develop commerce, where we want to have a nightlife, where we want to see people walking and enjoying themselves, we're going to be looking at self-storage. It doesn't make any point. What am I going to do? Go in and get my records at night and play my disco out there or something? <laughs> it's, 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 I, I think that should be taken out. We, 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 should, we should not have self-storage on, on our main street of 123rd Street and 125th Street. So, Mr. Chair. Yeah, yeah. So, so the footnote on self-storage, there's two footnotes, P4 and P5. What page is that? Um, so it would be in the last page the of the chart. So P4 says it's prohibited in the Chinatown Cultural Arts Innovation District. And, and P5 says it's prohibited in C1 zoned areas that abut the single family residential district and on major C1 commercial corridors such as Dixie Highway. Okay, so. But it doesn't say 123rd Street. But it says major psychiatric. For the subject, yeah, but the, but the, the problem subject. is with the major corridors. We stopped. That's the other thing I wanted to bring up. We stopped at, uh, uh, at Biscayne Boulevard on that major quarter. For some reason, 123rd Street, 125th Street turns into 123rd Street when you cross the railroad track. Okay, that major corridor ran from what I believe the tracks, you look on the map, over to, I brought it up the other day, to what? To, 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 you said to Biscayne Boulevard. Mm -hmm. After Biscayne Boulevard, from Biscayne Boulevard all the way over to North Bayshore Drive, that's not a major quarter anymore, according to the comp according to our plan. No, it, it, it is, a, and I think you know the clarification here. This is C one major corridor, major corridor with a C one commercial zoning classification, not C two B E, not C two B W, not C three. We need to get to have this clear. C one, especially along West Dixie, Seventh uh, Avenue. Those are the major C1 areas in the city. So what is 123rd Street? It, it's it's a C3, and, and then becomes C2BE. C, yeah. And so is is storage permitted or not? Permitted? Uh, I'm, and now, but if you keep reading that footnote and it's further subject to criteria established in Section 51702. Oh, it, it keeps going. Right, so it I'm keeps going. The line. How, how do we so what does that say? Take my hearing aids. That's a what section is that, Dan? And what is 51702? I mean, if you allow me to jump to I another article. To jump, <laughs> this is an important issue. <laughs> jump, jump. So we can, we can look at 51702 for this purpose. I mean, let's see the attorney say jump. Yes, jump. jump. Could you give us a page number when you find it? Yes, uh, 173. If you look at how this is written, this is sort of shrinks where they can go to a very specific area. It's very, very shrunk because it says you have to have three. you have to have streets on three sides. Three sides. Right? They have three entrances. No, you have to have public streets abutting on three sides of the property. Yeah. All right. You can't have any outdoor storage. Uh, you can't be adjacent to single family zone <laughs> land. Um, you can't be next to a park or a waterway. It can't be adjacent to Biscayne Boulevard. There's a minimum lot size. Development has to obtain site plan approval. And you cannot have vehicle, vehicular access on the major corridors. Well. So it's like sh it's really it's really limiting. It's further limiting where I, I, in C two B E this could be. I like to go further with that. I like to go further in the land use and, and, and prohibit it on one hundred twenty third Street from North Bayshore Drive to one hundred twenty fifth Street, all the way over to the canal. That way we know ironclad, we're not going to finagle the bagel and get something in there. 
Okay, I, I'm looking at this map here and I can see a couple of areas where we could squeeze one in and I think it's about time that we say no, no more to it. I I mean, let's let's just be let's clear and let's just put the money. All right, I I I I see it coming. I I can. And the last thing I want to look at is when I come into the city to see another self storage place. On my main street, I don't care if we put them on the industrial area, side streets, what have you, but not on that main street. You know, we're talking about redevelopment and this and that and everything else. But here we're gonna. You know, it's all right. I, I, let me let me try okay, to I, I got two two other motion? things yes. that I, I just wanted to bring up. We talked about uh, abandoned telephones in the land use. Hmm? Yeah, what's been done? Can we, can we can we we need to address? Uh, let's try. Well, that's to, let's see that was in section four let, here. Let, let's see if we can finish with this storage <coughs> building. Okay. All right. But you want to prohibit it where again, sir? Say again. Where, where do you want to prohibit? Where do you want to block the storage buildings? From from North Bayshore Drive. From North Bayshore. 123rd Street all the way over to, well, it's a residential. They can't go any further with that at, at, uh, at say, Griffin Boulevard. Or, yeah. Well, or that's, that's the 125th Street. Yeah. And that, that's 125th. To 123rd all the way to basically the toll bridge, <laughs> really. Oh, yeah, exactly. What used yeah, to be the toll That's our main street. That shouldn't be there. Yeah. Would be like these little liquor stores we wanted to put in. There's a proliferation yeah. of them enough. All right, L listen. Let's let's make this short and sweet. I can I concur with Kenny and Mike. We don't we really don't want to have storage buildings on the main street. And the main street in the city is 125th, from Griffin, all the way to the causeway. You can call it North Bay Shore if you want to, but but make it simple. Prohibit it that way. There's no 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 language <laughs> issue. I, I know certain attorneys in here who would rise to that challenge and who would perhaps spend hours convincing us that that's absolutely permissible under that, that definition. So let's change the line and, and say no storage buildings from the canal east to Bayshore. Make it simple. That way the, the, there's no wiggle room. No bagels need to be finagled here. Okay? <laughs> from the canal. Yeah, which is, yeah, the Griffin Canal, the, yeah, from the bridge. Right, right. On 123rd and 125th? 125th, right back here. So it goes all the way over. So you don't build storage buildings on 125th Street, east of the canal. So no new ones. Right. Whatever's there is there, but nothing new. Okay. Yeah, we can't do anything about it. We had that other one, but he's kind of, that was kind of neat because he's got a small <coughs> bridge with the building. Set right, so let, let's I guess what we're asking, we had asking the city attorney is we got to make that bulletproof. Yeah, that's keep really it from getting it challenged. We wanted to be bulletproof, you know. <laughs> and of course, we've got an <laughs> item. I see the reaction of attorneys on the audience. If, if we want However, to give them something that, that is truly worthy of their of their challenging and talents, and this is so minor, we, we just want to make this bulletproof, okay? And let's see if we can do this, all right? If we have to incorporate, which... The language saying that it includes any uh, any zoning district along that. If there if there's more than one zoning district, yeah. However you have to do it, make it bulletproof. Who wants to talk about Article Five? Okay, sure. Yeah. So give them a minute to sort that out and find out how we have to make it bulletproof. Mr. Chairman. Is it possible to invite public hearing on this since you've gone into the next section we're, with we're respect to this specific issue? Just, just be patient. We'll get to that. Okay. We'll, we'll allow that to be reopened. But let's get some revised language, and then we have a public hearing to discuss it. He's okay. talking about what's in Article 5. Article well, we haven't gotten to 5 yet, I'm really. speaking specifically about the self-storage that's right. being well, discussed. Right. Well, if we solve it here, we, we, we'll take care of it over there. But, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Be patient. Where's, where's all the... The sun doesn't rise for another seven or eight hours at least. <laughs> we have coffee in the front. We can be here all night if we have to. Yes, Mr. Held. We await your wisdom, but you see what we want to do. Okay, so I can see adding in the footnote a prohibition, adding the prohibition on the geographic area, 123rd to 125th Street from, is it Griffin? It's really the Biscayne Canal. To Biscayne Canal. To Bayshore Drive. Oh, ba wait. 
So the, there's the Kankanals, Kankanals on the west. Yeah, there's Kankanals on the west to Bayshore Drive on the east. There's Kankanals to Bayshore Drive. Yes. That so way there's no, no issue. Nobody gets in. Right. So my thought is that somebody may try and come in and get a variance from the geographic hmm. boundary. They'll all, they have the, the right to apply for variance. Not always. Not always. So you can say, sorry. I would no. That would be a, wouldn't be a variance. That would be a tax amendment. If it's not uh, permitted in that district, then they would have to do a tax amendment <coughs> to allow that use in that district. Right. One interpretation would be that it's a use variance, but you allow use variances. In this, in no, this no, we don't. You don't. No, we do a tax amendment. We don't allow use variance. It's it's a uh, non-use variance that we allow. Development standards. Okay. Well, to be. Si you can always have a text amendment that would come to this commission and the pla and the city council, yeah. but I, at a minimum, I would say no variances from these geographic right. boundaries shall be permitted. Right, that sounds good to me, and then let them argue it out later. All right. Okay. For that, they get paid the big bucks, and we get to listen for free. <laughs> okay. Uh, just, 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 just for a point. Uh, I don't know if you want to get this in now, but we, we talked about news racks, donation bins. And abandoned phones, public phones out on the street, they're all over. Is that in the section? No, I, I mean, um, well, do you want to do an ordinance on that, or how do you want to handle that? Mm. This is not going to be addressed here, but if we're going to address it, that will be on the access we use in structures. It, if we're going to address that, that will be in the next article. Okay. Okay. Access we use is instructed. That's, I, I that's not our principal use. So we get language in this article. But that, that would be for a later article. Okay, fine. That'll solve your problem. We'll get to that. Okay. All right. So now we, we resolve the storage building issue, right? Okay. We kind of kind of put up a brick wall there. Uh, now let's go back to the one remaining issue in this article, and that was the square footage issue. Uh, I'm going to share with you some comments and then tell you my position on this. It was recently reported in the Daily Business Review that the city of Miami is, is, is experiencing a series of rather interesting issues with all of their high-priced condos that they built in the Brickell area and in downtown. It turns out that developers are beginning, investors, not developers, are beginning to lose money on the units because they find they can't rent them for as much as it costs for them to be sold in the first place. And so now they're having to take a loss on those units that they bought, which were supposed to be profit making. A few months back, the city of Miami specifically authorized a single building to be built in downtown with units of 400 square feet apiece. Now, the reason they did that was because it turned out that all these wonderful condominiums in Brickell and downtown Miami had no small units that anybody could afford to live in. <laughs> and so, we find first they go down to 400 square feet for a single tower, and now the investors are com are crying in their beer that they spent, you know, a million and a half, whatever it was, and now they can't rent the units for enough on a monthly basis to pay the cost of the mortgage. It's not my fault, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I'm not terribly in sympathy. That's what an investor does. They roll the dice, they win some, they lose some. I actually don't have a problem with units that are 500 square feet as long as they're randomly assigned as studio units in various buildings without regard to percentages. Builders study the market intensively before they build. They're not going to build a building of 500 studios because they know that the bigger demand is for family units with two and three bedrooms, but they're going to have odd lots left at the end of each corridor and there's nothing wrong with smaller studios. I was here when we did that 750 square foot issue years ago, and it, at the time, it made perfectly good sense to all of us back then, but times have changed. I happen to have three millennials in my house at the moment. I have the only car on the property. They, they use bicycles and ride share and friends and public transportation. They don't know why I own a car. You know, it's like, where do you go that you need a car? Just just call an Uber or a Lyft and go there. They don't know why you own a house either. Yes, well that's uh, yes. One of them asked that recently. They said, you know, I'd never buy a house. This is this is, you know, you just have too many things. You've got to constantly fix, repair, and replace. So, so uh, the bottom line, Miss Billy, there's no fear of going to 500 square feet. We're not going to be inundated with a million 500 square foot units. So all it does is allow a developer to give him project to make some smaller units for those people, be they elderly or be they young, 
that don't need a big unit. Mm-hmm. I, that's well, then we specify how much, what percentage. Ah, yeah, the and market so determines. They're not going to build 500 of those little dinky units when the real well, market is for families. The market will never come to North Miami then. Because Actually, North Miami, unless it, it goes out to the east side. Well, why, why does everybody keep comparing us to Brickell Avenue? Exactly. Brickell Avenue is... I like wish we looked like Brickle. Hey, yeah, well, hey, we all wish we looked like Brickle, but Brickle is not happening. No, people in, in Keystone and Susie don't. Yeah. But I could, t- I could tell you for a fact of young people that have worked with me that live in Wynwood, they would look elsewhere because of the price of Wynwood. They live in small apartments now, and they would welcome looking somewhere else for a studio apartment. But not a large percentage of them, but at least if there's something available, studio size wise, well, if, or if, or if, loft wise, uh, in, in, a, in an area like ours, you know, well, I if, hate if, to say if, it, but if you build it, no, they it's won't a gamble. Uh, uh, yeah. If, Are you willing they, to limit you know. that to like the NRO? Well, it's well, limited in, in some areas. We're going to have to li- li- listen. If you look at some of the things that are happening in si- now, if you want to compare us to Brickle, which is a Light I years different I than yeah, us. But I haven't compared to okay. Brooklyn. Well, I'm others have. In general, but let's talk about what's uh, let's talk about what's happening in cities like Detroit and Chicago, where they have built the small units, and guess what? The small units have turned into ghettos. Okay, so you know th- there's you know there's extremes on both ends. So I I think that if we take the smaller units and we we put them into um, you know, we put them into uh, senior housing. They're randomly distributed across the city. It becomes an. Well, I don't know whether randomly. Di- what does randomly distributed mean? You mean if it's all.